fall. Yeah, I had a really great time. Uh, we should do it again sometime. Uh huh. I, I've got a ten dollar bill just burning a hole in my pocket almost every week. Oh, tempting. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night. Good night. I, I thought you were going to invite me in. There you go, thinking again. Well, can I at least call you? Um, okay, sure. Well, hey, I don't have your phone. And you're not going to get it. anyone there? Hello? Hmm. Oh well.
In all my years on the force, I've never seen that much blood. Nothing prepares you for that. Brownsville certainly wasn't prepared. Just as the best-selling novel paints the picture of a small, sleepy town in the middle of nowhere, so goes for our little quiet spot on the map called Brownsville. It's a town of palm trees and orange groves, a place where children run free and their folks leave their doors unlocked at night. It's that one town that is polled every year as the safest place to live in America. It's basically a town that makes Mayberry look like Brooklyn. That is, until yesterday. Our jail only houses three cells, and we've never had a population problem. Showtime, guys. You guys are lucky. Got a grilled cheese. Today's occupants are Lester Douglas, a bartender with sticky fingers. He works the night shift at the local tavern. Claims he needed the money for his kid's birthday. Grilled cheese my ass. So see the bologna. Next up is Calvin Sawyer. He's new to town. He pleaded ignorance when it came to our policy on cockfighting. What's your bird do? Undefeated. Nice. And then... There's him. The likes of which this town's never seen. Hey, guy. Are you hungry today? The likes of which this town would rather forget. The individual remains at large, and police cautions residents of Brookdale and all surrounding areas to lock their doors. And in other, the strawberry festival. Excuse me. Excuse me, do you work here? Customer, need a room? <sighs> Hello, anyone in there? Hey, the fuck's wrong with you? You don't acknowledge the customers? More like it. Name sir, what can I do for? You have three guesses. The first two don't count. Ah, I see we got one of them sarcastic broads, Melvin. All right, I'm good with that. See, Melvin's taking a licking to you. You know, we don't see too many pretty ladies around here. Unfortunate. Do you have a towing service nearby? My car broke down in my old back. this son of a bitch right here. One doctor even suggested I should just take a shotgun and give him the good old yellow treatment. What do you say, Melvin? You would like that bullet up in here? Okay, so how much is the room? Ten spot will cover it. Room 15 at the far end. Thank you. You're welcome. Here, yeller, come back, yeller. Best dog or dog in the world.
paradise. Attention, I'm school. I'm gonna fetch me some food up around the corner. You know, some of us actually work up appetites around here. I don't want any monkey business while I'm gone, understood? You're still thinking about the bobbies, ain't you? That's what I told you, little pervert. What would you do with those fiercy biscuits, huh? Do you squeeze them? Would you grab the milkshakers, huh? huh? Yeah, keep dreaming, you fucking piece of shit. All right. Don't go nowhere, all right? I'll be back. Someone there? Ever since we booked him, he just sits there, doesn't speak, doesn't eat, doesn't even move. It's like he's fueled by hate or the devil himself. He just sits there staring into the distance at some unseen object. I'm staring at nothing, really. I've been with the department 27 years and I've never seen anything like this, ever. Four slugs. The guy took four rounds and still survived. Uh, we're still waiting for the paperwork, so I don't know. Yeah, but one thing I do know is this town is really shook up. Uh, hold on. I've uh, just been handed something. This could be it. Uh, I gotta go. There it is. Taurus! I'm just saying, I don't see why this can't wait until the morning. Because orders are orders. Now zip the lid. You don't gotta be rude about it. Guess the zipper's broken today, huh? All right, tough guy. It's moving day. Bear claws, you call hands. Look, mister, we don't want any trouble. Hey, look, man. There's 
two ways we can do this, and I promise you, you're not gonna like what's behind door number two. So let's go, let's see them hands. All right, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. We got some movement, see? Told you, don't get your panties in a bunch, man. Let's rock and roll. Gentlemen. Well, you guys certainly made good time. Hey, it's not so often we get to transport at night. Hey, uh, that big old dude is getting in here. Yep. Who signs? Out of your me. Gomez. Go grab a black and white, follow him on over. Yes, sir. Where y'all get that big old freak show from? What? You didn't read the paper? Hmm. It's all yours. Hey, let's go, man. Let's keep this moving, all right? Let's do this already. But you're anxious to see this one, though. No, you have no idea. Actually, his destination wouldn't be my first choice. I think he's better suited for a penitentiary, but uh, court order. All right. Y'all getting in there with him? Mm. Y'all ready? Yeah, man, we locked and loaded. Captain? Right, Captain. You both drive safe. Yeah. you tough guy you want some gum look at you not saying a word huh? all you got to do is speak say something you know talking's everything trust me when I tell you no, Sarge just uh, let him be just you got all the Browns of old fool don't you giving us the silent treatment breathing hard as ugly as you do. Can't catch your tongue, huh? Because I'll tell you something, man. You don't got me fooled. Yeah, in my way, I put you on that execution chair and I'll watch you burn. But instead, you won't get the lonely bed. Yeah, you bought yourself a nice little room, didn't you? Nice little bed, television in the corner, waterfall view. Well, trust me when I tell you. Make sure that you get the chair. And I'm gonna be front row. And I'm gonna watch you fry. What you think about that? Huh? They're almost finished prepping his room. Hello there. Welcome to Shady Glen. I'm Nurse Bennett. What's your name? He's a John Doe, ma'am. Oh, well, don't you worry about a thing. We're going to take good care of you here. Where are his papers? Right here. Thank you. Um, nurse. Buddy, buddy. What did I tell you about flying in the halls after lights out? <laughs> no fly zone after lights out. That's right. I, I got thirsty. 
Well, go ahead and put down your landing gear and come over here. Oh, oh don't worry. He, he's harmless. He just gets restless at night, that's all. Hey, hey, buddy. This is our friend. We're going to call him John. He's going to be with us for a while. You just remember, I've been here longer than you. So you have to do what I say. You got that? Buddy, be nice now. Come on, buddy. Let's get, let's get you to bed. By the way, the room's ready. Thank you. But I got thirsty. I'll get you some water in the room. Make a right here. This way, gentlemen. You got him okay? Yeah, you guys go on about your business. We got this here. Let's go, come on. Here we are, home sweet home. Alan, I want to be sure to take these cuffs off, right? Yeah. Let's sit them down over here. We're good to put them right here? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go, let's sit down, tough guy. Come on, come on, quicker. You guys have a straight jacket nearby? Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. He'll be just fine here. We're gonna get you a nice hot shower, get you in a clean gown, and, and put some food up in you. Sounds like a plan? Okay, well, Carl here is gonna get you settled in, and I'll be back in an hour to check your vitals. We're gonna leave him with you. We gotta get back to the station. You good with them cuffs? Yeah, we're good. Thank you, officers, but what do you want us to do with this jumpsuit? We don't need it. Burn it. How'd it go? Well, it's not hell where he belongs, but uh, at least he's out of our hands. Alan. 11.35. So wait, we're done? It's over? It's over. You know, it's funny. When I was assigned here, I never thought I'd be part of an actual murder case. I mean, given the town's reputation, I thought maybe I'd be handing out tickets for jaywalking or Maybe helping out a little girl get her cat out the tree or something, you know? Gomez. Yes, Serge. It's not a stakeout. Let's drive. Come on. Right.
What? Who is this? Hold on. Slow down. What are you saying? Who's on right now? Absolutely. Thanks. Dad? What are you doing up? Was it bad news? Come here, son. Is it your work calling? Everything's going to be all right. Okay? Just a precaution, that's all. I really just don't want him to be here by himself. Understood. Uh, he's a good kid. He probably won't leave the house, but just make sure you keep an eye on him. Copy. Okay. I want to make sure that all the windows are closed and the doors are locked after dark. I also want you to walk the property once every hour. You see anything suspicious, you call me. Am I clear? Crystal clear, sir. Okay. You're welcome to anything in the fridge. I'll be back when I'm back. Uh, expect it'll probably be late. Okay, one more question. Yes, this is a shit assignment. Just making sure. Yeah. But, hey, look on the bright side. If anything happens to the kid, it'll be your last assignment, so you got that going for you. Okay, then. Look, seriously, just keep your eyes peeled. Not to worry, sir. Everything's going to be okay over here. I appreciate it. Sir. Yes? Let's get this guy. We will. Where's my food? It's probably in the kitchen. Good one, Ronnie. Well, well, if it ain't the Brownsville Burt Lancaster. Well, hello there, Denise. So, uh, so I guess that permanent vacation wasn't all that permanent. Mm, nope. Maybe next year. I'm thinking. New York. Broadway star. That's the same thing she said last year. Hey, <laughs> don't you got dishes to do? Right, 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 right. Get to it then. Look, I'm sure your little girl had fun. Oh, maybe a little too much. Do you know what she said to me? She said, Mama, I don't need you no more. I am independent. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Six years old. <laughs> well, you know what they say about little girls and their moms and at a certain age. Mm-hmm. Well, just you wait. Tommy won't be a perfect little angel forever. Well, thank you for the warning. You are very welcome. <laughs> well, so is, is it just me or is it a little quiet in here this morning? Well, you haven't heard yet? Heard what? Well, it looks like the press is on their game today. Well, maybe the police should have been more on theirs. I'll put a sock in it, Isaac. <laughs> Don't take it personally. Everyone's just a little on edge today. I understand. Hey, Matt. Should I be worried? Should I take Lyle and the kids somewhere? No, nah, everything will be fine. You tell me otherwise. You can count on it. Be careful out there. I will. Hey, Denise, can I please get a coffee? Hold your horses, I'm coming. <laughs> Look on the bright side. At least this puts our town of Shitsville on the map. <laughs> Is that supposed to be funny? So what, you're cracking jokes now? No, I was just trying to lighten the mood a little is all. <laughs> lighten the mood, huh?
Let me ask you something. You even know what's going on here? Look, Sarge, he didn't mean anything by it. No, Alan. He has control over his own words. Well, look, just forget I said anything, all right? Are you at the hospital? Huh? Did you see the way it was left? Answer me. Get your back up out of my face. Hey, look, you see this here? That says sit the fuck down. Why don't you sit me the fuck down? Motherfucker, you piece of shit! Hey, you're a fucking piece of shit! Hey, 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 enough! Settle your differences later. We got work to do. Well, never thought I'd have to say this, but we've got ourselves a fugitive, gentlemen. Look, I know you're all worked up right now, but I need you to channel that energy into the task at hand. Effective immediately. You're all working double shifts, so I hope you're well rested because you're not going to get much sleep until this guy's caught. Yeah, what is it, Alan? Sir, given his head start, he may not even be in town. We can't I assume mean. anything. Until he's found dead or alive, the only thing we know for sure is that he can be anywhere at any time. Period. In case any of you need a refresher course, here's our guy, John Doe. He's wanted for five known counts of first-degree murder. Now, we don't know if he's armed, but we certainly know he's dangerous. Sergeant, you're up. I assume we're going to call Brookstone Police on this to back us up, right? Already been done. Just waiting for them to get back to me. Understood. Jackson, Fuller, you guys take the north end. Me and Alan will back you up on the south. You guys already seen this guy's rap sheet a thousand times, so you guys know what we're up against. Any questions? No, sir. Sir. Okay, gentlemen, get to work. Uh, Taurus, uh, you stop by my desk before you head out. Yes, sir. Hey, little buddies. So, uh, where's your mom? She's in heaven. She got cancer when I was younger. It's just me and my dad now. Well, you're very lucky to have him. Your father's a good man. Yeah. Is it fun being a police officer? Yeah, it can be fun at times. Sure. Have you ever shot anyone? No. No, I haven't. And I hope I never have to. My dad has. So, hey, it's summertime. Where's all your friends at? They're all at camp. I hate camping. Yeah, I'm not too big on camping either. So tell me. What's going on? Well, we're having a nice little chat. And drinking some of the best lemonade I think I've ever had. I mean, I get it. I'm a kid, and we're always left in the dark on things. 
but we're smart enough to know when something bad or strange is going on. I mean, it's not every day I'm being chaperoned by the police. Your father is someone I truly respect. So if he decides to not tell you certain things, I gotta respect it. You understand, right? Yeah. But what I will tell you is that no matter what bad things are going on, you don't gotta worry about anything. So everything's gonna go back to being good again. So how you doing, Sergeant? No offense, but I don't think today is a good day to ask that question. No, uh, I disagree. I think the question is quite relevant. For one thing, we've got quite a case on our hands, a case that neither you or I have ever had to deal with. And number two, we've got this whole personal ties thing hanging over. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Talking about Janet, Sergeant. And the fact that you two knew each other. How'd you know that? No, that for one. <laughs> you don't get one of those out of a Cracker Jack box. I, I'm a detective, did you forget? <sighs> Experience would be number two. And the fact that this old chair has literally molded itself to my ass would prove that I've got that. And number three is merely an observation. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been observing your actions lately. I saw the way you looked at her. I've seen that look before. It's a look of disgust, of anger, rage. It's the look of revenge, Torres. So, I need to know that my number one is able to maintain his professionalism and not let his emotions get the best of him. So again, I ask, how you doing? I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, she's a friend of the family. I'm good friends with her brother. That's how I met her, we went to school together. The day that happened, man, she was on her way to Brooksdale. She was going out there for a new job. Yeah, I know. When I interviewed the hotel manager, he said she was just passing through. She was only gonna stay one night. She was the only guest in the hotel. When the hotel manager returned from lunch... What are you doing, nasty bitch? He saw our John Doe break into her room. What's going on there? Oh, shit, fuck. He went back to his office, got his pistol, went to the room... Where are you, fucking grizzly bitch? ...and shot him. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was too late. I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, this one I'm going to take personal. I'm going to be completely honest with you, man. The day her brother called me, trust me when I tell you, that's a day I'm not going to forget. But I promise you I'll maintain myself out there. Tell that to Jackson. <laughs> yeah, well, Jackson, man, I mean, he's going to have to get over it. I'll get him a shot. He'll be all right. <laughs> all right. You're dismissed. Be safe out there. <sighs> yes, sir. Sure, this place is even open? Fuck should I know? It's lit up, ain't it? Yeah, but hurry the fuck up. I left my bike on the highway. You should be thinking your lick is having picked your greasy ass up. Fucking Mexicans. Anybody here? It's lit up, ain't it? She can fuck right on off. Hi, hello! Anyone home? Maybe he's out to lunch. At one in the morning? Never heard of a graveyard shift? It's probably another lazy redneck like you, sleeping all back somewhere. <laughs> hey, Pancho, you want to walk back to your bike? Easy, dude. Don't flip your wig. I'm just messing with you. Uh, I'm going to go see if these pumps are on. Good idea. Get the pink and pollo. What? 
I said, I'm going to check to see if they have a crapper. What the fuck am I doing? I should just leave this shit back here. Of course. Fuck it. Why am I such a fucking nice guy? Shit. We have a trifecta going, no gas, no plumbing, no service. Ah, uh, you found the guy. I told you he was sleeping. Yo, did you check the pumps? What's with his eyeballs? For Christ's sake, man, look at him. Oh shit, what the fuck happened to him? I don't know, man, get the phone, call the phone. Oh, fuck! Oh, shit! Hey, what the fuck are you, man? Hey, what the fuck? What the fuck? Peters. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> What's happening? Is that the one who called? <sighs> nah, she's just a customer. She got here a while ago. Two victims? Uh, three. That's the uh, gas station attendant over here. So, what time do you think it happened? Uh, you're the professional. I just work here. Captain, you're not going to go down and touch him, are you? So, body's still warm. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say this happened uh, really early this morning, uh, maybe 2 a.m. Yeah, so? <laughs> Means he's not far away. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain, for saying so, but I mean, he could have jumped on a train, he could have gotten a car, he could be miles from here now. Look, 
If he wanted to leave town, he would have done that yesterday when he broke out. No. Something tells me he's close. What the hell are we dealing with here? Shit. Sure you notify the families before the press gets here. Will do, Captain. Captain. Damn it, Gomez! Thanks for the heart attack. Sorry, sir. Nature called. You know, it's been said that there's little in life better than pouring a glass of scotch and sitting down to relax after a long day. I certainly think this one qualifies. Cheers. It gets better as you go along. I thought I used to drink this stuff when I was a kid. <laughs> I would sneak out of my room every night after bedtime, sit down on the stairs and just watch him drink. Man, did he make it look so good? <laughs> so this one time after school when he was gone, I tried some. <laughs> but man, I, I almost threw up. <laughs> well, that sounds about right. You know, when was your first time drinking? Yeah. Believe it or not, it was just six years ago. Really? after my wife died. I was told that uh, alcohol numbs the pain and uh, <laughs> I was in a lot of pain. Your son told me about the cancer. I'm sorry about that, sir. Well, my wife managed to give me the greatest gift of all before she passed. All uh, eight pounds, four ounces of him. Hey, he's a great kid. You did one hell of a job raising him. Thanks. Your turn. So what's your story, Gomez? What made you choose a career in law enforcement? 
Oh, it's kind of like yours. I lost someone really close to me. And your mom. Yeah, that's right. It was in your background check when we hired you, along with your performance evaluation, which I, uh, I must say was quite impressive. Well, thanks, Captain. I really appreciate that. Is that the reason you're here? Well, sorta. I mean, just like all moms, they want the best for their kids, right? So as a teenager, I was a bit of a troublemaker. I'm always hanging around with the bad crowd and all, but no matter how much trouble I got myself into, she was always there and did whatever she could to get me back on track. So when I got the call that she'd been in a car accident, I didn't have much time, so I ran. I mean, I literally ran to the hospital. And I don't know if she heard me or not, but I made a promise to her that no matter what, from that point on, I was gonna do good and make her proud. Well, that is one hell of a story, Gomez. Yeah, so it wasn't a few years later when it hit me that if I became a cop, you know, maybe I could help others get their life back on the right track. I will certainly drink to that. Got everything we need here? Yeah, we're good. All right, come with me. Got to show you the circuit breaker where they cut the electricity. Yeah, I should probably get a picture of that too. Call came in, 6.07 a.m. Name of the victim is Gloria Patton, 27 years of age. She actually was a dancer over there at the uh, club on Highway 39. No M.O. Excuse me, sir? Look, a dancer at a nudie bar, a couple of mechanics, a young woman just passing through town. Even the most notorious murder cases have motives, you know, a purpose, a reason. We have a guy walking through town randomly committing murder. This makes no sense. We've seen this guy. We had this guy. We have his prints, we have his, his mug, and yet it seems like we got nothing. Well, I wouldn't say we got nothing. I mean, we got ourselves a witness. She was here when the whole thing went down. Claims she saw everything. She's willing to come down to the station and make a statement. Well, that's something. discussed so far has been informal, off the record. Everything that we discuss in here is going to be documented. Do you understand? Okay. Uh, with that said, are you ready to talk? I'm ready. Okay. Well, my name is Hector Torres. This is Jake Allen. Today is the date of October 20th. The time is uh, 4.45 p.m. For the records and for the purpose of this interview here, would you mind stating your full name? Nicole Luna Diaz. And so our understanding is that you were a witness to the homicide that took place earlier on 517 Birch Street in Berkeley, California, correct? Yes, that's correct. Now, would you tell us what you saw in your own words? I don't remember the exact time, but it was around 2.30 in the morning because Gloria comes home around that time.
haul again. Electricity bills. I couldn't move. I just kept praying for her not to be dead. She was stabbed so many times. We know this is hard. According to our records, your call came in at 6.07 a.m. I don't know what time it was. I just knew it was light outside. So if Gloria came home at 2.30 a.m., you're telling the both of us here that you were in the bathroom for three and a half hours? I never left that spot until I called the police. Did you get a look at the guy? I mean, anything he was wearing? Was... It was so dark. He was just this giant beastly shadow. And what about his clothes? He was just wearing what looked like a jumpsuit. Almost like a prison uniform. But look, I know it's your guys' job to ask these questions, but it's pretty hard to remember the details when you're watching your friend being stabbed to death, okay? I'm sorry. We're almost done here. The only one thing I do remember, in fact, I can't get out of my head, is his hand gripping that knife high in the air and the mark on his arm. A mark? Wait, did you get a look at the mark? Like a tattoo or something on his forearm. <laughs> to stay tonight? My parents, of course. I'll be fine. Is there anything else we can do for you? Get him. Captain. We're finished with the witness. I'll let me see her out. Okay, thanks. Captain, why don't you go home and see your kid? Get some rest. We'll uh, take care of things here. No. No, I'm fine. Look, I think I got something. What do you got? A lead? What? A good lead. Come in. Check this out. These were taken when we booked him in. But pay special attention to this one. That's the tattoo that Nicole mentioned in her statement. Right. And that's the same mark I found drawn in blood on the back wall of his cell. Okay, and... Uh... And that. <laughs> Look, the first two murders, here and here. Janet in the motel. Here's the hospital. Over here is the gas station. And you should recognize this. You were both there today. Okay. What does all that mean? Hold on. Looks like our killer's following a path. 
Check this out. That's the reason he just didn't leave town after he broke out. It wasn't part of his plan. This mark is his plan. But either of you guys recognize this symbol? Never seen it. I mean, it doesn't look like a gang sign. I mean, my guess would be a cult or... Well, that's where I put my money. Wait a minute. Based on the tattoo, the drawing's wrong. There's a line missing. That's because he's not done. Look, if our speculation is correct, he's got one more stop right down this path. Here. Nobody lives in that section. It's all orange grove. There's a farmhouse there. It's just not on the map. Who lives there? I do. Oh, shit. Look, get a black and white ready. Get it. Go. Go!
for you. I repeat, the suspect is headed for the farm. Get Tommy and get the hell out of there. God damn it, go! Tommy, you around here? Tommy! 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 Shit! Jesus! There's a man in the house! Whoa, 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 what's the matter? There's a man in the house! Wait, what do you mean? Where? Upstairs! Are you sure? Yes! Shit. Alright, what do you look like? Let's get back to the station. Run, run! Get in, get in! Shit! Come on! It's not starting! What do you mean? The battery's ah! Come on! Run! Run! Both of you look around the outside. I'll check the house. Yell if you see anything. Gomez. Gomez. Gomez, you back here? Hey, whoa, 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 relax, relax, it's me. I almost shot you. Warn me next time. All right, calm down, man. I found an outhouse. Let's go check it out.
Tommy. You can come out now. Daddy's here. Everything will be fine. Where's Officer Gomez? The scary man got him. Okay, well don't worry. You're gonna be okay. You're with us now, okay? Let's go. Let's get you up in the house. Tommy, come here. Tommy? Tommy, get away from him. Tommy, come here, son, now. Are you okay? I need you to go inside now, okay? I'm having trouble with this. Oh, no, no. It looks perfect. <laughs> You're trying to hang yourself. <laughs> Look, let me show you. Now, this is so easy, even a baby can do it. First, we take this tie, we throw it on the bed. Then, get what I call magic tie. Now, we open up this part right here, and we clip it on your collar. And done. Whoa. <laughs> I'll show you the other method on a day when we're not running late. So, what do you want for breakfast? 
Pancakes. <laughs> Look, and what do you want on those pancakes? Blueberries, bananas, strawberries? Mm -hmm. How about butter? <laughs> butter. Imagine. <laughs> I haven't made you breakfast. You haven't been in all week. We thought we would eat in today. Hmm. Hi, handsome. Hi. All right. Captain Peter changing up his routine. I like it. I will get some menus. Our special today is blueberry pancakes with a side of bacon. Dad, why are they all looking at us? I, I don't know, son. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, Captain. Speech, Cap, speech. I, I do want to say a few words. First of all, I would like us all to send our deepest thoughts and prayers to the families of the victims. Fortunately for them, they don't get a happy ending. And, uh, and while my sergeant, Mr. Torres, and his partner, Officer Allen, are recuperating in the hospital, I, I feel the true hero in all of this is Officer Stephen Gomez. Come here, son. Officer Gomez sacrificed his life to save the life of this young man. Now, Gomez once told me that he joined the force to help people and make a difference. And I know that his mom would sure be proud. Oh, hell, I'm not really good at this, but if you would all raise your glasses in honor of Officer Gomez, a uh, fine young man, you will be sorely missed. Thanks. And uh, I'm going to shut up now and <laughs> let, you all, let you all get back to your meals. Thanks.